God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight. Uh, it's a special evening. Tonight we have um, a great you know, commemorative room being put in. Also, it's our first full meeting, official meeting of the new board. So this, this is a very special evening. I need approval of the minutes of the regular meeting on April 19th, 2023, the special meeting, May 3rd, 2023, and the special meeting minutes from May 8th, 2023. So moved. Second. Mr. Lobos? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mrs. Pagliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Bruzzetto? Yes. Mr. Feldman? Yes. Uh, tonight we have uh, some recognitions. Uh, two of our staff members have just been outstanding this year. And the first one is uh, Mrs. Lori Johnson. Uh, Lori has done an exceptional job building upon the foundation of our early childhood program. Her enrollment numbers continue to climb. She has updated the curriculum, classroom furniture, and a spearheading initiative to create an outdoor playground. Mr. Mankin, would you like to make any comments? Sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Sarver. Not just her good humor or integrity or intelligence, but she's done a phenomenal job in other aspects with the early childhood education in places like Ottawa and things. So when she came here, it was truly a gift to us uh, in, in every sense of the word, because uh, she was recommended by one of our partner schools. LP was gracious in working with her to get her in the door here. And then she acclimated to the position she's holding now. And that program is just phenomenal. So with that, uh, Mrs. Lori Johnson is a human being and teacher of the highest caliber. Her love and dedication to her craft is present in every aspect of her classroom. The operative word in her philosophy is love. In working with teenagers and imparting to them the wisdom and genuine care that it takes to bring preschoolers out into the world of learning and social interaction, what she has done can only be accomplished through love. Love of humanity, love of learning, and love of challenge. In working with Mrs. Johnson, one witnesses is witness to the evolution of the ACC Early Childhood Program has been remarkable. Whether it be in a fully attended cadre of preschoolers or a growing number of requests by high school students she teaches, one clearly sees her program is thriving. This observation fully lives up to the recommendation given to the LP and to LP and the ACC community in getting her here. The recommendation to have a look at this excellent educator came from one of the ACC partner school admins. That community that recognizes excellence and seeks to help all in the process of continuous improvement scored a direct hit in guiding Mrs. Johnson to LP and then to the ACC. During her tenure at the helm of the early childhood program, she has refocused the program on early childhood education, instituted in, an internship program, increased enrollment for both students and the preschool age, invigorated donations of learning materials to the program, and has garnered increasing numbers of students to pursue education at the post-secondary level. Additionally, she is currently working on a second level of dual credit for the program, incorporating a playground, and partnering with the larger Star Rock community to develop a home, excuse me, a homegrown teacher program. In all things related to education in her program, Mrs. Johnson has been a tireless advocate. She arrives early, stays late, projects positivity, and collaborates through amiability, all while staying focused on an educational philosophy that brings respect and dignity and learning to the students she serves. She's a phenomenal educator, and more importantly, a phenomenal human being. Glory to God. Thank you. And, and for those of you who do not know, our early childhood program is an ACC program. Mr. Mankin is the director of the ACC. <clears throat> uh, Mrs. Johnson, would you please come forward, meet the board, and we have a certificate of recognition for you. Yep. <laughs> it's like a gauntlet. Yeah. 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 Nice to meet you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Good afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon. Working on that playground. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Oh
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Her husband keeps me on my toes. <laughs> Couple people's husbands in this room keep me on my toes. <laughs> I have to say that, you know, working with Dwayne, I mean, he can make anybody sound really good <laughs> with his words, but it, it would it wouldn't be the same if he didn't. Dwayne over there supporting the program and helping and encouraging the Project Reinforcement all the time. Our second recognition tonight is our school resource officer, Nick Martin. Officer Martin has been a great resource in school safety over this year. He has provided Mrs. Lance the critical support and guidance as school safety office has transitioned to new leadership. Officer Martin is respected by the students and serves as an exceptional role model. And this is for this year, but we can look back previous years during the pandemic years we put in all the new initiatives in safety. Mr. Martin was right in the thick of it. He guided us through the entire process. Dr. Yeah, and I, I would add to that, um, Officer Martin is such a uh, calm presence uh, in the office. Uh, anytime that we have to uh, have some conversations about students that are making some poor decisions, what I appreciate about Nick is that it, it, safety is always first, but he's he's also very kid oriented, you know, and really works hard to build relationships with kids. And I think that's just been wonderful too. To also, I'm going to have a police presence here, but more than than that, it, it's also about providing such a positive role model for a law for of law enforcement for for our students. And Nick does a tremendous job providing us guidance um, as we look as we have looked at improving our safety and security procedures. Um, he's very often my, my go-to guy uh, if I have a question in, in regards to anything related to violations and how it would impact uh, the law. Um, there have been uh, many uh, evenings, late into the evenings, that uh, Nick and I will be on the phone uh, with other members of, of the team as we're having to, to address issues that come to our attention. And I, I never, ever not worry about if I have to call Nick, it doesn't matter what time. Uh, of the day or what time of the night is Nick is there, he's present, and he immediately marshals resources to be able to 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 guide our team and to ultimately help me make a make make good decisions. And so, uh, Nick, we're just we're thrilled that you are here. That this is kind of found your 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 niche here, and I certainly hope you're going to continue staying here uh, for as as, as as long as as you wish to stay here. Um, you know, it makes it that much more meaningful too that you're you're an alum, and there's something to be said about you know when our own uh, stay in the area and come back. So so thank you so much. So our honorees, oh, Mr. Baker, if you'll uh, kind of guide everyone for photos. Each month we do the vision spotlight on one of our uh, divisions here at Southwood High School. And tonight, 
we have the social sciences represented by Ms. Petroy Woods. My name is Troy Woods. I'm the Social Science Division Chair. Um, today, I just want to kind of give you an overview of how we teach our uh, founding documents and our Social Science Division at LP High School. Um, and I want to focus on how we cover the Declaration of Independence in our curriculum and our courses, um, and how this course aligned was developed by our Social Science Department um, through what's called the CLI process um, back in 2017 as a division um, we met. And what we did is uh, we put together um, outcomes and components for all of our classes here at LP High School. We looked at um, what are the key ideas, concepts we want to teach within each class. Um, we aligned them with uh, the social science goals of the state of Illinois. Um, and so this is uh, the outcomes and components for uh, one of the units in our US history class. Typically, our students will take the US history class either as sophomores or juniors. Uh, and so the Declaration of Independence is taught not just in our US history class, which you would expect it to be taught in, but our three core classes. So every student as a freshman takes uh, world history, or as a sophomore, they take world history. And so we start off uh, with world history in the Enlightenment, and we look at the Enlightenment thinkers. And specifically, we'll look at um, different individuals and the impact and influence they had on our founding fathers. And so I'll give you an example. This is a lesson that Kristen Adams uses in her honors world history class, uh, where she looks at the two different Enlightenment thinkers, uh, Thomas Hobbes and John Locke, and compares their different philosophies on government, and specifically how Hobbes advocated for a monarchy, and Locke advocated for a democracy, and we'll look at his ideas of natural rights, we'll look at the idea of the social contract, and so they're getting that foundation there, and they'll talk about the influence that it had on other countries, specifically the United States, um, and we'll also talk about the influence that it had on the Declaration of Independence, what's written into the Constitution, what's written into our Bill of Rights. Then as we move on to our U.S. History and Honors U.S. History classes, we look at the Declaration of independence there uh, in detail as well. And I just want to show you some examples of different activities we do within my class um, where we look at the political ideas behind the Declaration of Independence in United States history. So we'll go back and we'll look at Locke, where Locke's talking about things like life, liberty, and property. And then we compare that specifically to what Jefferson's talking about in the Declaration of Independence, how that's similar. Um, and then an activity that we'll do in class is We'll have the students rewrite the opening of the Declaration of Independence uh, in their own words and then discuss about, okay, why did you say it this way? What do you mean by that? Um, and have a good class discussion with that. So these are two examples of how we look at the Declaration of Independence with the American Revolution. Then moving on, as we get to the Civil mm -hmm. War, we go back to the Declaration of Independence as we look at Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. We look at his Gettysburg Address, um, and we connect those documents to the Declaration of Independence. Specifically, we'll look at the opening of the Gettysburg Address and what Abraham Lincoln is referencing when he talks about four score and seven years ago. And nobody knows what a score is, so I have to tell them that's 20, and then we'll do the math. And Abraham Lincoln is referencing 1776. What is he talking about with 1776? And we'll tie in those core ideas that he's talking about there, tie it into the Declaration of Independence, and then look at the closing. Why did Lincoln open up with referencing the Declaration of Independence? He closes with, he's talking about this new birth of freedom. How is that connecting? There. What's the core? And so we're not just done with the Declaration of Independence with the Revolution. We tie it into the Civil War. We also do that when we look at the Declaration of Sentiments uh, with the women's suffrage movement. So we'll, we'll look at it multiple times within the course. And then we're not done. We go to government. So within our government curriculum, we look at the roots of our Constitution and the ideas there. Um, and so this is an activity from Rob Clydesdale's. Uh, AP government class, where th this is an AP class where they're diving into documents. They're going to have to analyze documents, interpret documents, 
uh, and write essays for that. So hopefully they can pass that AP test in May and get their college mm -hmm. credits for it. And so the doc Declaration of Independence is the very one of the very first activities where he throws them into that, where they're reading a document, analyzing it, and then contextualizing it, um, which is a very key component to the AP courses. Um, but then in his American government classes, uh, we're looking at the Declaration of Independence, we're going back and we're looking at Hobbes, we're looking at Locke, um, and we're doing activities there. We talk about specifically how the Declaration of Independence is a breakup letter between the United States and Britain. And so he relates that too. He has his students write a breakup letter from the United States to Britain saying, why are we breaking up? And it's a really good activity that the kids get into and enjoy. And so um, this, is a, this is an example you can see with the Declaration of Independence. We cover it through our core classes. So it's not just one and done. We're looking at it in world history. We're looking at it in US history. We're looking at it in American government. Our kids can see how everything is connected. Um, and we just don't do it with the Declaration of Independence. We do that when we study the Constitution. We'll look at it in all three of our core classes. We do that um, with the Bill of Rights. Um, as a division, social science, we meet once a week with PLCs. We look at our, our outcomes and our goals. We'll, we discuss what we're teaching in our classes and how it's going. And we compare that um, specifically within the PLC for each class. So all the government teachers, all the US history teachers, all the world history teachers will talk about what they're covering. But then it crosses everything. So then we come back together as a division and do the same thing and discuss it. And if we need to change or tweak anything or get ideas from each other, um, that's what we do. Um, and so that's just kind of a, a, a little mirror of how we cover things in the social science uh, division. Um, thank you for giving me an opportunity to present to you. And I, and I guess I'd just like to take this opportunity to say uh, I, I feel very honored and privileged to be able to teach social science at LP High School. Uh, I'm alumni of LP High School. My parents went to LP High School. <laughs> My children went to and are at LP High School and are coming to LP High School. Uh, and I think about all the great teachers I had here, like Joe Skabinski and Ron Bird and Dennis O'Keefe. And it's just an uh, honor and privilege to be able to teach at the same school where I had great teachers like that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Troy. Very appropriate topic for tonight's activities. Definitely. Politics and government. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, public comment. Do you have any public comments? I know. Under finance, I need a motion to approve the bills and payroll of South Township High School. So moved. Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Belcourt? Yes. Mr. Pichetto? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. I need a motion to approve uh, the bills for the LP Area Career Center. So moved. Second. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murbaugh? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Belcourt? Yes. Mr. Pichetto? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. I need a motion to approve the payroll report. So moved. Second. Mr. Murbaugh? Yes. Mrs. Belcourt? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Pichetto? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. I need a motion to approve the financial records as presented. So moved. Second. Mr. Murbach? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Pichetto? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Under correspondence this evening, um, we have a thank you for Mrs. April Yudis for the Board of Education donation to the LP Educational Foundation in memory of her son, Jacob Yudis and the appreciation of condolences from the entire LP Cavalier family. We also have a thank you card from the Udis family to the LP Board of Education Administration and staff for the outpouring of support for their family after the loss of their son and brother, Jacob Udis. We also got a thank you card from the Udis family to the LP District Office for their support and kindness after the loss of their son and brother, Jacob Udis. We also got a thank you card the LP Local 604 Federation of Teachers, for the School Board of Education District Office for all the plans, activities, 
for the Teacher Appreciation Week. And we also got a thank you letter from Mrs. Kay Ranieri, library clerk to the Board of Education Administration for the annual Spring Fling celebration, which was last week at Senate Hill. Uh, board committee reports, uh, building and grounds committee, Mr. Ferrari. All right, we covered a number of issues uh, Monday at the uh, committee meeting, and I'm going to go over the four items which are action items on tonight's agenda. First of all, uh, LP Sports Complex Phase 2. Uh, as you may recall, last month we rejected the two tied bids and uh, rebid the project for the construction of the uh, concession stand and press box for the uh, baseball fields, and we split off as a separate item the uh, bathrooms for the soccer field. And uh, we received bids on each, and the committee has recommended the low bid for the large project from the for the sports complex, the baseball fields. Uh, that was from Bissering Construction of Streeter in the amount of $1,517,034. Further, we recommend the low bid for the soccer field bathroom facilities. That one is from Team and Builders of LaSalle in the amount of $219,750. And you'll find that on tonight's agenda under item 10.7. Uh, next, we had the uh, discuss the auto shop phase two renovation and the nurse's office renovation. And you'll see under item 10.9 tonight, uh, we're looking to submit uh, building permit applications for those as well as the main building entrance door replacement projects. Also, uh, we discussed the uh, stadium concrete repairs. Uh, as, as you may recall, we discussed there's a, there's a lot of concrete work that needs to be done at Howard Fellow Stadium, but there are certain items that after a walkthrough were determined that uh, for safety reasons, those need to be taken care of this summer before uh, next fall's season begins, uh, involving hand railings, uh, stairway treads, things like that. So we have uh, under item 10.6, we're looking for approval to hire Leginski Cement Finishing Company to do those specific items, which uh, total $35,820. Uh, those come in under the uh, the amount that are required for us to put it out for bids. And they have done work at the stadium many times in the past, and the work has always been regarded as excellent. So that, that is a proposal under number 10.6 tonight. And the uh, school is looking to purchase a used vehicle, uh, 2021 Chevy Traverse. It's got about 19,000 miles on it, and they're getting an uh, extended warranty. Total cost of the vehicle is $38,467.26. This is from Cornet Dodge of Peru, and you will see that on tonight's agenda under 10.3. All of these have been recommended by the board. Uh, we discussed several other items, as you can see on... Uh, the materials in your packet. If anybody has any questions about those other items, please feel free to ask. And either I or Dr. Robleski can answer your questions on them. That's Thank you, me, Mr. Then. Ferrari. Uh, finance Committee, Mr. Marlowe. Yeah, the Finance Committee <clears throat> met on Monday. We reviewed the monthly financials that you saw in your packet and um, uh, we're 83.3% of 
of the way through the year. And it's hard to look at the summaries and stuff to understand where we're at at budget because there's some skewing there um, with the working cash movement that we had to do earlier. That'll be cleared up with the amended budget. But we are right at our revenue sources and our expenditures are under budget. So that's the main thing that came out of that. We reviewed the cash and investments as of April 30th um, and, and cash flow, nothing out of the, out of the ordinary there. Um, so we talked about that. Then we also talked about the 2022 tax year extension and we provided an update from the administration on that. I'll just say that the EAV came in very close to what we estimated and it results in a 2% or 2 cent reduction of our rate. That's in the end, that's what it ends up being. <clears throat> we did discuss the action item 10.2, which is the amendment to the district budget, which uh, we also recommend, and, and it's an action item to have that displayed. We talked about four bid recommendations, um, which are action items 10.8 and 10.7 regarding uh, several different items that we, we also recommended approval of. Um, we got a brief LP Sports Complex Phase 2 general update, and it's really good news. They're, they're really going quickly out there. They've only missed six days of work due to weather to this point, so they're really, really going quickly out there. Um, we also discussed the vehicle purchase recommendation, action item 10.3, and recommended that, and the stadium concrete proposal, uh, to action item 10.6. Then we also uh, recommended um, that this go to the agenda, action item 10.18, which is the temporary uh, summer workers, the recommendation from the administration, we approve that. And the um, call system, the final site website and all call system, which is uh, action item 10.5, we're recommending that also. Um, other items we talked about was the potential we're looking at different items for time clocks and things like that. And then one item that didn't get on the agenda but is on on, um, on our agenda for the committee but it's on the agenda for the board meeting is the technology purchase for Chromebooks and the accessories. And I'll just say I don't know that the committee recommends it, but I personally recommend <laughs> that. <laughs> Me too. All right. And that's okay. it. Are there any that questions? Was easy. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. Uh, policy committee, Mrs. Alcorn. We met um, and reviewed one item on the agenda was the press release. Um, it was a lot of changes and not anything new. And so the board is, uh, the committee is recommending that you approve. Uh, 10.12 Any questions? Thank you, Mrs. Elfman. Ministry reports, superintendent's report, Dr. Obleski. Thank you, Mr. Sarver. Um, the, uh, we received our annual renewal uh, for our property casualty workers' compensation. Um, and um, unfortunately, we're, we're going to see uh, a rate increase. Um, from where, uh, from last year's uh, uh, rates. We are expecting to see a 13% increase uh, in our rates. Uh, so for the combined package for property casualty as well as our workers' compensation, we're going to be increasing from $225,978 to $255,744. As I've kind of talked to our, our consultants as well and some of the other districts that are in the cooperative, um, you know, it, it's been a kind of a trend that they're, they're, they're seeing, particularly in workers' compensation. You know, there have been some unfortunate, you know, uh, injuries, uh, not only within the, in the cooperative, and we've had some staff members here too, you know, that, um, that uh, have had some, uh, some accidents. And part of one of the things that we do with that too, uh, through our buildings and grounds department, is um, we make sure that we have a monthly um, uh, check-in with our, our field service rep from, the, uh, from our insurance company that does ongoing presentations. You know, we made some changes in our collective bargaining agreements where we're providing safety toe shoes for all the employees. So as, as some examples uh, that were, uh, we put in place to be able to, to limit our, um, uh, our costs. 
We've also had some insurance claims on the property side as well. Um, some environmental, well actually that was not approved by the, uh, by, by the insurance, but we've had some, some other damage to the, to the facility. Um, some uh, lightning strike to one of our air handling units on the roof um, uh, that uh, we're seeing the impacts uh, of those claims. Um, we had our unannounced uh, kitchen inspection uh, with the LaSalle County Health Department. Um, uh, we, had, we, had, we had one finding uh, this time, and the, we, we received a, um, uh, an area of improvement is we, have a, we had a mop that was sitting in the bucket um, with the water. And so uh, that is, that's a violation I learned. And so uh, our department's already uh, uh, fixed that in terms of uh, having a, some uh, equipment in there from the air dry. Um, so that way they're, they're, uh, we're not having the mop sitting in, 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 in water. What I appreciate about these, though, is that you, you, there's always something that they find. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, though, everything else was just, uh, we, we had 100% on all the other components uh, for our food, our, our, our food temperature checks and the procedures, quite frankly, in terms of the food preparation, the storage of the food, and the quality of the equipment. You know, so in those respects, too, you know, I would also consider probably the more core central uh, components to, the, uh, to maintain the safe environment. Mm -hmm. And I know Mrs. Cushing will be speaking on this, but I'll just as a reminder, it's graduation tomorrow. And for my part of this is if I have the board members arrive to the district office uh, between 6 o'clock and 6.15 uh, tomorrow. Um, and we will be in our Trello Stadium. Uh, the last uh, item, uh, we had one FOIA request mm -hmm. uh, from this last month. It was a request from the University of Kentucky mm -hmm. that was requesting uh, information on student directory information consulted with legal counsel, and, and Walt was able to kind of guide us on what we were able to respond to, and we met our response within the designated five days. That's all I have is our questions. Thank you, Mike. Principal's report, Mrs. Cushing. Steve foreshadowed, we'll be talking about graduation, certainly. Um, that's been the whole focus for the last month of my life. Um, we've certainly done our due diligence in preparing the students. We had a practice today. We practice for indoors and outdoors, just in case uh, the, the weathermen are wrong uh, with their forecast. But um, it does look like sunny skies, so hopefully we are, are, are outside. We will be graduating 236 students this year. Um, so class of 2023 um, is to have quite a few students. Um, the setup will be the same just to, to let you know uh, as in years past. Um, I know we have a new board member, um, but we will be uh, sitting on the stage at the 20 yard line at the north end of the field. Um, and we'll go through, share our students' names, um, and sort of have that, that um, typical traditional ceremony um, this year. We also have um, had our senior award ceremony that happened at the um, end of April and we were able to give away over 50 scholarships to students um, and many, many uh, thousands of dollars to our students. And so I just publicly like to thank all of those donors. Um, they're extremely generous every single year and, and very much appreciative of that um, generosity. Something else I'd like to mention is our end of the year celebration, uh, which will be held on Monday, May 22nd. Um, we're looking forward to honoring our retirees as well as celebrating all of our staff accomplishments um, in terms of, you know, um, their favorite award is Perfect Attendance Award, believe it or not. Um, so we'll be going over that along with all of our other um, awards for them. Uh, just to highlight some of the work of my associate principals, Mr. Gibson has been very busy with the AP test. We have 300, well, around 320 um, AP tests that we were able to give this year. Um, which is excellent. Um, he has had to, to work very hard at making a lot of accommodations here at the end for all the different uh, uh, schedules for sports and, 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 and accommodating those. Um, but um, we're going to have some record high numbers this year, so I'm very pleased with that. Um, also, would highlight Ms. Lance. Um, she has um, wrapped up all of our safety drills for the school year um, and submitted that paperwork. And she and I are already working on getting the registration set for next year. So um, you can look forward to that uh, the first week of uh, August. So, um, other than that, I don't have anything else to share unless anyone has any questions. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Director of Activities and Athletics, Mr. Gazeel is not here this evening. 
Mr. Court is in your packets. Uh, Director of the Area Career Center, Mr. Minkin. And before you speak, I want to say thank you for our mugs. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Very appreciative. Uh, I've heard that they actually can go through a dishwasher with the cork bottom. They, I don't know how long, <laughs> yeah, uh, but probably hand washing. <laughs> um, I'll just go in reverse through this. I wanted to start off by recognizing uh, some exceptionally uh, kind people in helping the ACC. Uh, in your packet, uh, you'll see one of the last items I mentioned was Mr. Matt Lee. Um, who, aside with everything else that's gone on through donations to his department this year, he grabbed the ball and ran with it. And at the moment, he's hustled up close to $30,000 in scholarship money uh, to be handed out for students who either want to go into engineering or into the machining uh, trades. And so that, that money um, is now sitting with both the, well, the other side of my job, Sharapi, and also the ACC side. And so um, I wanted to thank uh, Emmy Carney here at LP, who graciously shared uh, one of LP's documents for putting together a process for awarding them. And I also have uh, our, some of our partner school counselors will be sitting on a committee to help formulate the process for doing that. Our hope is to get it out this summer to some of those students who just currently graduated to be able to participate in that. The, the renewable grants that come up every two years, and based upon us being about the only one in the region that has something like that, I foresee it being able to be renewed uh, continuously. So hopefully it'll address some of the need the area has mm -hmm. and help students uh, be able to pay for college. Uh, we can award up to $2,500 per student. So it looks to be a very nice thing. Mr. Lee did some nice work in getting that. Um, I also wanted to thank Mr. Baker. Um, as you've probably seen some of his blasts, um, we're getting ready for what we call our summer showcase where we have the pre uh, the middle school students come in to experience what the ACC offers and what CTE offers them. Currently, we have um, registrations from 17 different schools, and we're 50% above last year's registration, closing in on 100 uh, students to come here. We're hoping for more. We can take more. Um, but uh, Jeanette Maurice, who's one of my assistants, has been phenomenal with getting that going the past three years. Now that we're out of COVID, and uh, aside from some competition from sports camps, I think we're doing very well with getting kids to come over here and see what these things are all about. Um, other than that, uh, within your thing, I just want to recognize the fire science department and our, uh, again, uh, everyone from Mrs. Cushing to our other principals in the ACC for allowing them uh, to put on a food drive to help the Illinois Food Pantry. Um, they did a nice community service project with that. And our welding students did exceptionally well over at IBCC in one of their first annual welding competitions. We took a first, a second, and a third uh, between the things that they went into. So I'm very proud of the kids and, and what they did in there. And then lastly, um, we're looking at, again, uh, thanking our community partners that we have with, uh, in this case, uh, Vactor, the Ogilvy Fires Department, um, and uh, the LP uh, Counseling Department here. Um, our kids, a focus this year at the ACC was on soft skills. Every employer tells us we need kids that can do soft skills. We'll train them for other things, but get them to be able to do and want to work. And so LP's uh, guidance department, um, when they have their uh, Cavs Connect uh, showcase, they graciously invited all the other schools to come with the ACC kids to participate in that. So we're very thankful that all of them got uh, to put their skills to use. They had been practicing those things like interviewing skills and resume building with the community partners from the business area. And then LP got them over here to actually put it to use for real. So again, uh, thank you for all of those people that help us. And that's the report if anyone has any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mankin. Director of Communications, Mr. Baker. Good evening, everyone. Um, well, as it's already been brought up, one of the big projects that's going to be on the horizon is that migration to the new uh, website vendor. It was really just a matter of one large company bought out another large company, and so we have to change the things around. But I uh, talked with them, it looks like there's going to be some, some good positives that will come out of it. Um, just a little bit of extra work this summer as we re redesign. But it's always a good opportunity to look at what we're doing and, and how it can be improved. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and aside from that, really, the fun stuff lately is, is uh, you can't even hear it's at the end of the year, so there's all, all the great activities happening in the building. Um, and I've been able to kind of put a finger in, in, in a few of those pies, and it's really been great. Counseling department's done a great job with their decision day, uh, really giving every senior who's graduating an opportunity to talk about what their future plans are, some, a nice feature to put on social media, and, and a couple other things to really showcase our students, not only those who are college-bound or the 
uh, future college student athletes, but also those who are going into the workforce, uh, military, other vocations, um, really show up all, all the opportunities that can come out of uh, LP education. Um, um, some other great pieces, uh, working with um, our freshman English classes. I helped them on, with the, Mrs. McCauley's group on creating uh, a kind of a student newspaper where they interviewed dozens of people around the building and, and told their stories, some really neat stuff. That's a, uh, was to be shared out on, on uh, social media. If you caught that, we're always happy to share that. Um, lots of great things with a number of our programs. Also, as you guys see, Mrs. Sherry DePape from the foundation is here. Just want to mention, as Dr. Bleski talked about Teacher Appreciation Week last week, um, one of the great things the foundation has done the past couple of years is hosting a uh, cookout on, on the Friday of that week for all the faculty and staff. Um, they bring in all the food. Uh, we get the grill out, thanks to our maintenance staff for setting all of that up. Uh, Mr. Teeman and I uh, ran the grill for a few hours, got a little smoky, uh, but avoided the rain. And uh, yeah, a really nice treat for everybody in the building. And then one uh, last piece, Mrs. Reeves is right here. I know we're gonna be talking about the Herbal Shango Alumni Room quite a bit uh, shortly. But I really can't thank Mrs. Riva and Mrs. Bergagna enough. Um, just in the past couple weeks, the amount of work they put into helping Dr. Robleski and, and I kind of get that room set up. Um, we had a lot of uh, artifacts and materials ready to go in the room, and they really found the way to display them and make it look great. Um, so they really deserve a lot of kudos for that. Um, so that's all, unless you have any questions. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Baker. On the new business, 10.1, uh, uh, we have a resolution to read. Salford Township High School District 120 resolution. Be it resolved by the Board of Education of School District Number 120, County of the Salem Bureau, State of Illinois, as follows. Whereas the Board of Education values the history and reputation of the Salford Township High School and takes great care to determine whether any room or facility shall be named in honor of an individual or family. And whereas Mr. George L. Herbelsheimer III, LP class of 1929, honorably represented the LaSalle Fruit community for 57 years as a co-founding member of the Herbelsheimer, Lannan, Henson, Duncan, and Reagan law firm, served our country with distinction during World War II, improved our community through his dedication to serve others, and faithfully guided LP High School as school attorney. And whereas Dr. Henrietta M. Herbelsheimer, LP class of 1930, improved countless lives through her service as a medical doctor, serving as chief of maternal and child hygiene division of the Illinois State Department of Health, and educated a generation of physicians as a University of Chicago professor and a prolific writer for many medical journals. And whereas the Herbelsheimer children wish to honor their early education George and Henrietta received at LP High School. Now, therefore, be it resolved that room 237 shall now and forever be named the Herbelsheimer Alumni Room to serve as an inspiration to those using this space. And be it further resolved that this resolution be incorporated into the minutes of a permanent record, a copy displayed in the Herbelsheimer Alumni Room, and that the original be presented to the Herbelsheimer, Herbelsheimer family with deep appreciation for their generosity making this room possible. Adopted the 17th day of May, 2023. I would like to make a motion to approve the resolution renaming the alumni conference room to the Herbalsheimer Alumni Room. Second. Mr. Sarger? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Murbaugh? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Corbett? Yes. I just want to uh, express on behalf of the, the board and the administration uh, what a joy it has been um, working, um, uh, if I may, with Larry and Bob um, uh, over the course of really the last year plus 
uh, as we've had conversations and um, uh, I've appreciated the, the incredible support and generosity of the entire family and it's, it's been a pleasure to meet in person. Uh, I know that we had a Zoom meeting uh, where we had a chance to, 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 to meet some other members of the family. Um, I also want to recognize Mike Kometz, our district architect. He sends his regrets. His uh, son, his son's band concert is tonight, so he's where he is supposed to be uh, this evening. But he wanted me to personally express his gratitude to the Herbelsheimer family and the for having the opportunity to be able to work with the family um, on the design uh, of the room. Uh, Lee Park Construction Company was the firm uh, from Ottawa that uh, won the bid for the construction of the room, and we just can't wait uh, uh, to, to, to show it to you. I've shared pictures um, uh, up to a point <laughs> <laughs> with the family uh, to where you've seen the, 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 the case, casework and whatnot, and uh, we can't wait at the conclusion of our open session to come down to the room to have the formal uh, ribbon cutting ceremony and for you to uh, hopefully be as overjoyed as we are and overwhelmed uh, with the, the outcome of, of the room. Thank so I want so to thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have time for Abs that? Absolutely. You. Um, the microphone is yours. Well, thank you. Um, I first of all want to say how honored we are to be here and to, to provide this room to you all. and. I wanted to acknowledge some of my siblings, and I'm first going to start with Carla Bowman, who can't stand up, Carla. So people, she's the shyest of the bunch. <laughs> um, and then George, Herbert Schirmer, George, you can do it. There you I go. Can do it. Motor nerves. <laughs> and, and Bob Herbert Schirmer, my brother, and uh, and with us also is Lynn Herbert Schirmer his wife, who was a student here for two years, and then her family moved away, unfortunately. But uh, we're honored to be here with you all, and we, we're grateful. And, you know, I, I, I don't know if you realize that we had a foundation set up in which we gave scholarships to uh, many deserving young students that were going off to college and universities. And, and uh, I, I guess as we age, and you can see that aging well. <laughs> Some of us are not aging as well. But um, um, we uh, felt it was kind of important to kind of bring it into the foundation and see how those funds could be used in some different way. And so we were introduced to this remarkable guy at the end of the table, Dr. Robleski, who uh, every time I talked to you, I came away thinking, I wish I could be like you. <laughs> Uh, he was so full of enthusiasm and positivity and and brilliance, really, to come up with the idea of the alumni, alumni room. And, um, you know, just made it a, a miracle that came true for us. And we just wanted to thank you as much. And he's a real gem, I'll tell you. you know, don't let him get away. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to say. And thank you so very much. And um, anybody else want to? Okay. Well, that's all you're going to get. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, on the new business, I need a motion for approval of the uh, authorized public display, the FY 2023 amended district budget. So moved. Second. Mr. Rubel? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. I need a motion for approval to purchase a 2021 Chevy Traverse from Cornet to Peru for $38,467.26, uh, $35,532.26, and $2,935 is the warrant. Second. Second. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Taliani? Yes. Mrs. Mr. Murbaugh? Yes. Yes. I need a motion of approval for the following 2023-2024 technology purchases of $487,542.34. Second. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Murbaugh? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Carlin? Yes. 
I need a motion for approval of five-year agreement with uh, Final Site, which replaces Blackboard for the website and all call services for uh, $82,497 as presented. So moved. Second. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. I need a motion for approval to hire Rudzinski Cement Finishing Company to complete stadium step threads and wall patching repairs for $35,820. So moved. Second. Second, Lynch. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murbo? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Cassetto? Yes. Mr. Sarvik? Yes. I need a, a motion to approve the award of contracts to the following bidders for the athletics uh, sports complex. Uh, support building rebid of $1,736,784. The base bid A for the concession stand and press box, the visiting construction company for $1,517,034. And the base bid B for the soccer building bathroom addition for teaming builders for two hundred nineteen thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. So moved. Second. Mr. Cassetto. Yes. Mrs. Taliani. Yes. Mr. Ferrari. Yes. Mr. Murbo. Yes. Dr. Lynch. Yes. Mrs. Alcorn. Yes. Mr. Sarver. Yes. I need approval to award the contracts uh, for the 2023-2024 uh, school year. Pizza, Pizza Hut, Milk and Dairy, Perry Farms, and Bread Alpha Baking. So moved. Second. Okay. Yes. Mr. Murbaugh? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Cassetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. I need a motion for approval to submit the building permit applications for the following summer 2023 projects. A, auto shop abatement, windows and overhead doors. B, main building entrance door replacement. And C, nurse's office renovation. So moved. Second. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Yes. Mr. Murbaugh? Yes. Mr. Cassetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. Any motion to approve the final 2022-2023 district calendar? So moved. Second. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Murbaugh? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Cassetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. Any motion to approve the IHSA renewal for the 2023-2024 school year? So moved. Second. Yes. Mr. Cassetto? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. I need a motion to approve the press policy issue 111, the second reading. So moved. Second. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mr. Cassetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. I need a motion to approve the following require requirements as presented. So moved. Second. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murbo? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Cassetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. I need a motion to approve the following resignations as presented. So moved. Second. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Murbo? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Cassetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. I need a motion to approve the recall of the following employees. For the 2023-2024 school year as presented. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Cassetto? Yes. Mr. Murbo? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. The motion to approve to rehire the following positions for the 2023-2024 school year as presented. So moved. Second. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Murbo? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Cassetto? Yes. Yes. I need a motion to approve the following appointments as presented. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Cassetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. I need a motion to approve the following summer 2023 temporary health positions as presented. So moved. Second. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Yes. Mr. Sarver. Yes. Made a motion to adjourn to executive closed session. A, discuss discussion of minutes of meetings lawfully closed under the Open Meeting Act, whether for purpose of approval by the body of 
of the minutes or the semi-annual review of the minutes. B, appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or discipline of a specific employee. C, security procedures to respond to an actual threatened or reasonable potential danger to the safety of employees, students, staff, the public, or public property. D, collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or the representatives or deliberations concerning salaries, salary schools for one or more class of employees. And E, intimate pending litigation with open session and possible action items to follow. So moved. Second. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Cassetto? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murbaugh? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Sauber? Yes. Because he brings a cup of coffee to work every morning. Yes. Yeah,